Hey, what's up, TV Land, or whatever uh, medium you're watching this? I'm going to assume it's on TV. I'm assuming, assuming most of you are on web TV these days. It's the latest. Anyway, what's going on? Guess what? Milestone. Man, how long can I keep up this energy level? Not long. I'm getting out of breath already. It's a milestone, though. It is episode 20 of I Suck Sticks Heart Cinema, and our second straight episode of actually talking about cinema and not the three of wrestling before it. So oh, I am just... Good. I'm so sick and tired of doing these things. Are we done yet? <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know. We've done 20 in... When did we start? Has it been a year? More than a year? Less than a year? I have I have zero concept well, we of were, the time frame. For when this. we recorded last time, we were still able to sit outside the first times. So it must have been the end of summer. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere in there. So 20 in between 9 and... I'm going to say 36 months. It might have been three years ago when we That's started. That's a good average. Yeah. In there. Round down. Anyway, let's do some quick uh, roll call. Scott, present. Drew? Present. Nick in Florida. Hello. Hey. There he is. So we got Scott, Drew, and Nick here. Alex in the UK? Alex in the UK? No. Nope. Alex? Uh, it's probably because we uh, we haven't talked to him and he's not on this call. I think that's why we're not getting a response from Alex. Oh, that's a shame. Because <laughs> you know, Alex loves his game. He does love this game. It is also uh, 2 in the morning his time right now. Good for him. Good for him. I'm glad he lives in a time zone difference. A stupid time zone. Can we agree? Can we agree that Greenwich Mean Time is stupid? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, very stupid. Can we agree that Greenwich shouldn't be pronounced Greenwich? (laughs) (laughs) Greenwich. Greenwich. Greenwich, Connecticut. Get your shit together. Connecticut. Connecticut. Connect is right in the word, and then they just added some shit, shit, and then call it something else. Anyway, Colonel. I could complain about... Colonel, don't get me started on goddamn Colonel. Anyway, we could go on with this all day. <laughs> if a pneumonia. <laughs> so, what else ba- is... It? What back else? to movie talk. What else is in the news? <laughs> I don't know, Nick. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. How's your cat doing? This is a, a nice three-day weekend for me over here in the States. Oh, yeah, we got our three-day weekend last week, and you get yours this week. You get Columbus... You get Columbus Day. What what did we get? Was it's it Victoria not Columbus Day? Day at all. Mexico Day. It's not Columbus Day? What is it? No, it's no. Memorial Day. Oh, Memorial Day. Columbus Day is in October? I have no idea. I don't know what I was Columbus gonna Day is. I criticize you for not knowing it, and I have no fucking clue. <laughs> I was going to say, I figured if you called me on the first one, you'd have some information. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a calendar. I don't know. <laughs> That's true. I. Uh, <laughs> you have never been accused of being a calendar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna accuse him of being counter. <laughs> so yes, what... it's Memorial Day. It's like Veterans Day, only in the summer. Yeah, what's the difference? Again, I don't know why I'm asking none, you. None really. There's no difference between Memorial Day, Veterans Day, President's Day, Fourth of July, Fourth of July, President's uh, Day, America Day. You have an America Day? Labor Day. Every day is no, America no. Day. USA A O K Day. Must just be America Day. <laughs> Every day is America Day. Have you seen any movies recently, Nick? I have. Hit me. I <laughs> have seen in theaters Star Trek Into Darkness, and uh, on I uh, just last night I watched a uh, Canadian masterpiece Manborg. <laughs> oh, man, Borg. Looks so good. And then right after that, I watched uh, Six Drinks of Samurai. And what did you think of said movies? I uh, I enjoyed all of them, some with varying degrees, but I did enjoy all of them. Star Trek Into Darkness was awesome, and I had so much fun watching it. Drew and has for any person that's minutes. complaining about it, they're fucking stupid. <laughs> You saw it too, Drew, right? I saw it. I did not. My only complaint about it was that they got the title wrong because it sort of should have been... I actually changed what I thought it should be called to Sadness Trek. Everyone is upset because I swear everybody cries in that movie. Sounded like there's a lot of crying. Well, for good reason. Yeah, I know. But... No spoilers, but something sad does happen. Quite a bit, actually. Is is Khan in this one? Yes. Awesome. Spoiler alert. Do it like the original. Is he genetically modified to have grandma hair? 
Well, what they did was they brought Ricardo Montalban back from the dead. <laughs> and they just... They, or they cloned his spawn. And now he... He's alive again. Nice. Apparently, uh... Ricardo Montalban has the same offspring as Timothy Dalton. What? Benedict Cumberbatch is Timothy Dalton's son. What? I don't know what to do with yeah, this information. You didn't know that? I did not know that. That is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's his. Uh, he took his. And I think the name is completely made up. Actually, I'm not sure if he took his mom's na- last name or what. But yeah, he's uh, Timothy Dalton's son. That is Weird. a. I'm gonna say right now that is a bad name to take. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird one. That is a. Well, he wanted to distance himself from the whole Bond thing, I guess. I guess, but that's still that's a silly name. I guess. No, but is he it makes up for it in being an amazing actor? Oh yeah, God, he's he great good. in that movie. Has he done anything? What else has he done? Major? He was in War Horse. Okay, was he the horse? He was the horse. Okay, he did a pretty uh, good only job. the back half though. <laughs> I was the back half. Okay. He was the back half. You know that's that's the tougher part. That is that's why he did it. Anyone can play the head. Not a lot of people can play the butt. Yeah. With all that tail whipping and farting. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, he plays Sherlock in the BBC ah. reboot of Sherlock. Yes, that's right. See, I I always say and Sher- that is amazing. <clears throat> yeah, I hear Sherlock's very good, but I still prefer the American version, Elementary, because I like my Watsons female and Chinese. <laughs> that, that's the correct. That's the correct response. I'm so irritated that that show even exists. What are you looking up? I uh, well, I was looking up the release date of the first new Star Trek because I was going to say I I had seen it, but then I remembered I've only seen the first forty minutes because I got to the theater early to see something else and just went and watched the first 40 of Star Trek before I saw the other thing. I was trying to remember what the other thing is. It probably actually wasn't as good as Star Trek. <laughs> but that's what it was. And I haven't seen the second one yet, but I probably should. You should. I, it was... I should actually, I should probably see all of the first one, and then all of the second one. Or to stay consistent... I actually just watched the first one uh, about two days before I saw Into Darkness. Oh, yeah. I like both of them very much. Yeah, I liked what I saw for the first the one. The cast is perfect. Yeah, the casting is really good. Oh, and we I, I think we had an off-air discussion about this. Uh, Zachary Quinto. Quinto? Quint, Quinto. It's Quinto, yeah. I, so, yeah, and, I, I, anything else seems too it, la- Latino for him. It should be Quinto. <laughs> Quinto. It, like, that's, that's the point, is that Zachary Quinto is gay, and he plays Spock, who is a 100% logical species, so therefore... Homosexuality is logical, so that should be a full-on argument for gay marriage, right? You lost me. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You're you're from Florida. You're not supposed to agree with that. <laughs> I don't know. See, in the movies, he's with Zoe Saldana, and I, that's that is, seems far more logical to me. Did is you? He, is he grossed out the whole time? He's like, Ew. like, yeah. I was gonna say, Nick, when you were watching he that. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, did he not look incredibly grossed out to have to kiss her? Like, it was so awkward. <laughs> well, that's because she's black. That has nothing to do with kissing her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nick said it, not me. Ah, uh, but everyone was thinking it. <laughs> I was thinking it all along. <laughs> and what did you think of Manborg? Because I've seen lots of previews for it, and I really want to see it. <laughs> uh, it's good. It's not... I don't know, it kind of has that trauma sense of humor to it, but not so much that you just want to turn it off. Mm. Um, I don't know. I liked it. I recommend watching it and just having fun with it. Yeah, that's not a movie you take seriously. I recommend watching it with someone of a similar taste to you. Because watching it by yourself, you're going to go, this is fucking stupid. I can't watch this at all. So Scott and I shouldn't watch it together because we don't like the same things. We like uh, some of the same I'd things. I'd say that maybe you and Kelly would watch it. Okay. Yeah, I'll watch it with Kelly. Kelly and I watched the ABCs of Death, and that was perfect for the two of us. <laughs> and uh, what was the other one you saw? Uh, Six String Samurai. And? Your thoughts? It's awesome. I'd love I've seen that movie before. I really oh. like it. Yeah, that's good. I've never seen it. I've heard things about it. Yeah, I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. Scott? It's basically Fallout New Vegas 
with rockabilly music playing the whole time. Okay. And a samurai. Okay. This is pretty cool. Yeah, you can combine that. It's um, Samurai Buddy Holly <laughs> walking to Las Vegas in the post-apocalyptic future with a kid going, ah, the whole time. <laughs> Good stuff. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> um, <laughs> Scott, have you... Part Wolf and Cub, part La Bamba. Nice. La Bamba. Uh, Scott, have you seen anything happen in, in the movies, in the theaters? Yeah, I've seen a couple... Are you scrolling through the list of movies in theaters now so you can try to remember what you've seen? That's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> I have... Okay. I consider myself a relatively intelligent gentleman. Oh, well, I that, have that makes a, one of us. Good. I have. I seem to have a gap in my brain works where I cannot remember, for the life of me, gun to my head, give me a million dollars what the last movie I saw in a theater was, even if it was yesterday. I don't know why. It's this weird, just blank I have in my head, always. You, and any given day, any given year, you can ask me that. I will not any know Any given last. Sunday? Any given Sunday. Even if the movie, even if you ask me on a Sunday, and that Sunday I saw any given Sunday, I still wouldn't know. That's terrible. Because I have a brain disease. <laughs> you have a tumor. I got a... It's not a tumor. But... Okay, looking at the recent releases, I do know the last three movies I saw. They were, in no particular order, except in the order that I saw them in, uh, <laughs> uh, 42, The Great Gatsby, and The Place Beyond the Pines. So there. Read all your reviews for all three movies combined in 11 words or less. Uh, I don't know about them black people. <laughs> that is Perfect. That honest to God works for all three, <laughs> in varying contexts. <laughs> okay, that in, might be the funniest thing I've ever said. Actually, I, <laughs> in in more than eleven words, explain these movies. Uh, How would you think of them? I will explain them separately. Uh, I I will say as a whole, I liked all of them. Uh, forty two was forty two was well done. Um, I thought Harrison was good as Branch Ricky, uh, the best name in the world. <laughs> uh, and if he's not the best name in the world, the real name of the guy who played Jackie Robinson is Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, also awesome. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm looking up Chadwick right now actually because has he done much? Else? I don't think so. Not nothing of major importance. Yeah, I like that he gets last billing according he to is, Leonard. Chadwick Boseman is last billed in forty two on the Leonard Malton app, by the way. And it's the only movie he's done, according to Leonard as well. So, there you go. Leonard's a piece of shit. Interesting. I wish Leonard was dead. Tremendous racist. Oh, yeah. No doubt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was good. Um, 42, I think we agreed, was the number of times that Alan Tudyk said nigger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good old Tudyk. Because <laughs> he was awesome in it. He's And Tudyk isn't even listed... On the ca- okay, Malton's out of his mind on this. Well, maybe he just went f- like, uh, who's in this movie? Uh, this guy. Christopher Maloney is billed second to Harrison Ford. Hmm. Was he the second? What? Yeah. I don't know if this is in any particular order. No, actually, maybe not. It can't be. Anyway, yeah, it, it was good. I thought it was it was, it was well done. Uh, well done, well acted, all that. It's not like Oscar worthy, I don't think, but it, it was it was a good movie. Uh, worth seeing whether or not you like baseball more more so if you do like baseball. Not that there's a ton of actual baseball playing in it. Uh, then I saw The Great Gatsby on Mother's Day with my mother. You gay. Um, which is made more upsetting by the fact my mother died in 2003. <laughs> <laughs> now we. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, and I thought it was really good. And then, then I read the reviews. It's forty eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes, like from the critics. It's like eighty something from fans. Well, fan, fans, fans are fucking, fucking retarded. Retards. So, but yeah, like forty eight of the critics. But then I read the negative reviews. Every single negative review is either someone who saw it in three D. <laughs> <laughs> which I didn't which is the correct response yes or uh, people were saying Boz Lerman was trying to be too cool I'm like it's Boz Lerman you prick he did fucking Moulin Rouge what do you expect so if you if you go in, so I say if you go into it go to the non 3D version and realize that Boz Lerman likes to be cool 
or, then or, you'll enjoy it because I thought it was really cool. Go into it not watching it in 3D and don't be a complete hipster fag. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that was Gatsby. I th- I thought it was fun. I think um, I think this is sort of gonna make Carrie Mulligan an A-lister. I think if she wasn't already, but she's um, cute. She's cute, and I think this was big for her, and she'll do well coming out of it. Oh, I already see one reason why I don't want to see this movie. Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire. He was fine. I hate you, Toby Maguire. It's among, it's if you're a- listening to this, I want you to go back in time and kill yourself so I don't have to see the third Spider-Man movie. <laughs> Toby McGuire, it was it was Toby at his least yeah it was Toby at his least annoying. When I was reading annoying. the casting for that character, and I was like, oh, that makes perfect sense, because the character of Nick and Great Gatsby is fucking useless. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's um, <laughs> it well that character is like it is Fitzgerald from from his perspective, like he like he's putting himself as that character in the book and right. and uh, and movie, but. But yeah, he's um, <laughs> yeah, he's a pretty useless dude, and uh, and yeah, and, and I think you commented. I, I made a uh, a Facebook post about uh, characters that you're supposed to like, but would be completely <laughs> exhausting and unlikable in real life. And I'd say near the top of that list is the Great Gatsby, because oh my god, this guy would be a chore as a friend. Holy cow! I'm surprised Toby put up with them for the whole movie. <laughs> I still like my uh, nomination of Ferris Bueller. He'd be the worst Oh, friend. Ferris Bueller is the worst friend! <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, no, he's terrible. He would ruin your life. He would ruin your life in a matter of weeks of, yeah. of meeting him. <laughs> that movie took place over, what, seven hours? Yeah, it was just and that day, see right? what the hell he did to Cameron? Yeah, that was one day. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, and last one I saw was uh, Place Beyond the Pines, which is great and makes me want to see Blue Valentine, even though I hear it's going to make me want to kill myself. Have I seen Blue Valentine? You tell me. No, what's the other Ryan Gosling one that involves <laughs> stuff? Drive? No. Half um, Nelson. Um, oh. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Spit it out. I'm trying to it's think of what it's called. Oh, yeah. Just all all Good Things was the other one I saw. Was the Ryan Gosling one? I didn't even know that one. Uh, I'm pretty sure that it's about him beating the shit out of his wife. Sweet, good man. She probably made a bad sandwich. Well, I'm pretty sure that his wife is. Uh... Yep, old scrunchy face Kristen Dunst. Kirsten, Kristen, Kirsten Dunst. <laughs> Kirsten. Yeah. Although so... Skeletor is in that movie because Franklin Gullet right, does Frank good Lincoln. things. Yeah. So yeah, Place Beyond the Pines uh, was two hours and twenty minutes. Um, I didn't know it was that long going in. Uh, going out, I'm glad it was, because they literally, for not a fast-paced movie, they actually needed that whole time to tell the story they wanted to tell. So, I'm glad uh, Derek... Derek Sion France. I'm, I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation, but that's what I'm going seems, with. Seems right. Yeah. Um, I actually did it that long, so... Well, I feel like he did something else big. Click on his thing. I want to see what he did. It's his second movie. His first one was Blue Valentine, that's it. Oh, that's it? Yeah. I feel like I thought I he did something else. Blue Valentine seems... Horrific. <laughs> yeah. It was, um, it's the second straight movie I've seen where Brad Cooper... As act- opposed to all the gay movies you've seen. Yeah, it's the second straight movie I've seen. Okay. I've seen a lot of gay movies in two straight. No, it's the second consecutive movie I've seen where Brad Cooper actually got to act, uh, that along with, uh, Silver Linings, of course. Well, Scott, so that was in- here's the surprise! Hangover 3's coming Later out. Later tonight, we're going to see <laughs> Hangover 3! I don't know if he acts too much in that, but that's okay. <laughs> um... Place Beyond the Pines was really interesting. I, I was a little disappointed we didn't get to see uh, the place beyond Eva Mendez's Pines, but uh, we did get to see some very erect nipples through a shirt. So, I don't know. Scott, if you want to see the place beyond her pines, we own the night. Because the opening scene to that, a little bit of this, a little bit of this, <laughs> a little bit of this. <laughs> I like visual gags on a podcast. And... It was it was a really interesting movie in that um, for uh, have either of you guys seen it? Nope. No, you were going I, to. I was going it. to, but my friend bailed on me. And Nick, you didn't see it. I have not seen it. Okay, so it's really interesting in that it's it's almost literally in two parts. There almost could have been an intermission because um, the first half is about 
one character, and the second half is about another character. Oh, they, and didn't, they didn't want to hobbit this shit and make it into three? No, they didn't hobbit it. Um, obviously, there there's interaction between the characters, and they're, they're, they, ha- they have a relation to each other. But, like, pretty much all of part one is about Gosling, and all of part two is about Cooper. And, because, it, cause, like, an hour in, um, I was thinking to myself, uh, I'm pretty sure his, his second build, so where the fuck is Brad Cooper? Because I haven't seen him yet. Uh, so it was interesting how he was introduced and then and how it actually became about him. So it was it's it's really unique um, movie in that way because not many uh, movies will do that where it's it literally changes its focus um, right in the middle. And one thing that needs to be talked about and oh man, I wish one or both of you had seen it. Um, the last bit is in is fifteen years in the future from the rest of the movie. Um, with, uh, his, at, in present day, Brad Cooper had, uh, a, a, you know, baby toddler, whatever. So now, Brad Cooper's kid is, like, 16. And the kid is unbelievable. I don't, I assume he's on the cast here. I don't know what his name is. Um, but the kid is straight up playing Marlon Brando. <laughs> and it's... <laughs> Seriously, you, you like got to see the movie for the last. Oh, it's uh, it's Ray Liotta. It's not Ray Liotta looking at the cat. He's I he's on some. I think he's on. Someone said he was on Smash or something. I don't know. What the fuck, Smash? The terrible music show. <laughs> you mean Glee? No, there's another one. There's more than one terrible there's music show. Two. Yeah, yeah, because. I actually I know Smash well because on all the comedy podcasts I listen to, like there's always one person who is currently hate watching Smash. Oh my God. <laughs> Are you hate watching Smash like you did no. uh, Desperate Housewives? I, no, I'm not Desperate Housewives yet. Although now that Smash is over, I might go back and watch all of it. But yeah, this fucking kid. <laughs> <laughs> At first, because like because he's doing Brando and and like. Not like, not like, not Island of Dr. Moreau Brando, like, like Last Tango in Paris Brando. And at first you think he's, um, like, oh, this kid is amazing. Like, this kid is going to be, like, a giant star. This this kid's going to be George Clooney in 20 years. And then a little bit more of the kid, and you're like, oh, this kid's terrible. (laughs) He's the worst. (laughs) But he's so entertaining. But yeah, worth watching Place Beyond the Pines. One, because it's actually a fantastic movie. Probably one, of, easily one of the best movies I've seen this year. Um, and also for the last 10-15 minutes with this terrible, shitty kid. <laughs> <laughs> but somehow his terribleness like doesn't hurt the movie at all. It just, like, everything moves along fine around him. <laughs> I think I think because his character is kind of shitty anyway, so it's a it's okay not to like him. But you really don't like him because of his acting and not because of his character. <laughs> it's so, sheer lack of skill that makes you hate him. Yeah, we, I don't know, or or maybe maybe he's beyond Brando, and that and that itself was actually a character choice to be a terrible actor to enhance your dislike of him. But <laughs> I could be going too I could be going too far down the rabbit hole on that. So that's what I've seen. Drew, what's up in, in your face? Um, I have seen multiple movies as of late. I saw uh, Star Trek Into Darkness, which I agree with things that Nick said. Great. Cumberbatch, great. Chris Pine, head's too big. I can't get over the fucking name Cumberbatch. That's delightful. It's it's an interesting life decision. He sounds like a British cartoon. Dalton Cumberbatch. <laughs> You see, he sounds like one of those characters that they created on Family Guy when they had all those British snobs. Yeah. Yeah, Nigel... Uh, Hop and bottom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or whatever the fuck it is. Um, so yeah, it was good. Um, I also saw Iron Man 3, which... If you've seen Iron Man oh, 2... Totally Iron Man 3. If you've seen Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3 is better than 2, but not as good as 1. That seems to be mostly what I'm hearing. I haven't seen any. I hear I should see one because it's very good. And I will say that Guy Pierce has become one of my new favorite, like, ridiculous actors because he makes some hilarious acting choices in, like, I, the last I few like movies he's choices. been in. 
I'm guessing the other one you're referring to would be lockdown. Uh, lock, lock, down, lock out, lock out, lock whatever, out, whatever the hell. Lock out, Prometheus, and this movie have all been ridiculous acting choices for him, and I loved him in all three. I like that Guy Pierce is actually getting like some regular, like fairly big time work. Because remember after Memento, when he was supposed to be the biggest actor in the world, yeah. and then he didn't do anything for five years? Time machine. Besides the time machine. Time machine! <laughs> I love time machine. He was in time machine, wasn't it? Yeah. Wasn't that but, that, but that's literally it. Like, he, yeah, man. He, did, he didn't do shit. Like, what? I don't know what happened to him. Because, like, he was so great in Memento, and everyone loved him. And, like, oh, he's going to do everything now. Drugs. And he did nothing. Drugs. I think he did a lot of Broadway, actually. I think he's one of those types. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Stereotypical <laughs> Paul Lynch noise. Memento. What's that? Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, was that before or after Memento? Uh, want to say after, but I'll confirm for you. Because he was really good in that as well. Um, but yes, I thought that Iron Man was good. Nick, you saw it too, yes? Yes. And? And it wasn't bad, nor was it good. Yeah, I thought it was average at best. The thing, my response to it is, they pump out so many uh, superhero movies in the last, what, like eight years? That yeah. y- you see one and it's incredibly similar to the other ones. I mean, I feel like if this you actually felt Iron Man three felt like like a Batman Returns or like Batman Forever. Like it seemed like a huge step back in storytelling. Yeah. Well, like I said too, they they did take a. I've seen said this before. They they've taken a lot of liberties with the comedy in that movie. I mean, they, they went almost to the point where you expect Robert Downey Jr. to turn to the camera and go, eh? Wink? <laughs> like, it, there's so many, there's so much comedy in it, and I found, like, even at times when there's... You supposed, expect him to be Jim from The Office? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Or, like, even when you expect, when the, when the story's getting a little bit serious, you, then, they, then they make a joke right away. And they're like, oh, okay, well, I guess it's that wasn't that serious. Like... They definitely. I actually had a conversation with a friend of mine who saw it, um, and I chalked it up to the fact that Tony Stark is he's just not a serious guy. Like he can't, he can't handle responsibility. He can't handle emotion. So he immediately knee jerk reaction has to make a joke. I can relate Otherwise, to that. Otherwise, <laughs> if he stops to think about it, his brain's gonna fucking collapse. You've just described Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You emotionless monster. <laughs> I'm very funny, though, so it's okay. <laughs> Depends who you ask. I know. Um, <laughs> and then the other movie I saw was I went and saw Oblivion. I'm sorry. With my mom. And yeah, I... With or without the Smiths? With, with what? That's without yeah, the Smiths. Is that the one with or without the Smiths? That's without... That's yeah. Without, okay. Yeah. A- after Smiths. Yeah. After Earth is the uh, the sequel to Pursuit of Happiness. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bold choice to do it in space. <laughs> in space, a thousand years <laughs> after they leave Earth. Yeah, I will say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, uh, see, I'm a huge sci-fi nerd, so I can look past a lot of the shitty acting and a lot of the shitty like. Well, there's tons of plot holes and just. Was not like that well written, but it was visually. <laughs> you just described three major elements of a film. <laughs> <laughs> I can look past all the I stuff can, that I, makes a 75% movie. Five percent of this movie's flaws. Here's the thing: Tom Cruise was not great. The other girl who I she's some British actor who I've never heard of before. Um, she was very good. I, I thought she was good, and then um. Like, some of the smaller characters were good. Uh, Morgan Freeman was Morgan Freeman. Exactly what you expect from him in a sci-fi movie in 2013 when he's 80 years old. <laughs> um, and then uh, N- Nikolai Koster Waldau from Game of Thrones was in it. He was pretty good. Although his role is limited, but he was good. Who is he in Game of Thrones? He Who is Thrones? fucking his sister. Ah, very good. Um... And but it was it was visually it was great it was it was super visually appealing there was so many uh, like essentially like they live on a like above ground like n- almost in space but not quite in space like above ground up, like apartment type thing and there is like a, a pool that you can see like straight down onto the onto the earth and stuff like 
there's a lot of cool effects, a lot of cool like usage of colors and um, and like a like um, like tampering with the light and it was very great to look at and like Tom Cruise wasn't as horrible as he's been in other movies. <laughs> I've seen worse Tom Cruise movies, but after you got past the first hour and it was sort of revealed what was going on, then it kind of got to the point where you're like, oh, this is kind of stupid now. Like, if they had gone the way that it was already going, great. It was on a good track. It would have been a lot better. But once you got the reveal, then you're like, well, yeah, that's kind of the easy way out of, like, explaining everything. So I, I kind of lost a little bit of interest towards the end of it. It seems like Tom Cruise's last two movies have been, like, the two most cliched, stereotypical movies ever. Like, Jack Reacher was an action movie, and that's it. Oh, yeah. Nothing special, no surprises. Guy punching, guy driving. Guy punching, guy driving. And Oblivion is just a sci-fi movie. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. Like, it, Tom Cruise, I, like, it's weird, because Cruise could do whatever he wanted, and yet he's picking, like, the safest possible movie choices. Yeah, or and I think, too, he's just going for trying to keep himself busy, and he wants money. What does he need money for? Because he got divorced. Still. And he's insane. Isn't... I, I see... I'm not including that in the mix, so I should be. You should be including, <laughs> like, legally insane. Legal insanity. <laughs> yeah, that is an important part of the decision-making process, so... But, yeah, that's what I saw. I feel like I might have seen another one, but I could not tell you what it is. I have the same response as you sometimes, where I go, Yeah, I saw a movie. What'd you see? Um, I, something. I'm pretty sure it was a movie, though. Something. <laughs> yeah, but it was good. So I guess now we can uh, we can play some games. All right. Uh, I don't know what games we want to play, or who wants to start first, or what the fuck's happening. I'm up for whatever you want. Well, let's play uh, A B C D's nuts, but we have to come up with our own name for it. Okay. Here's my dick. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, that's close enough. <laughs> um and. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, let's spell out fucking... I don't know, I can't think let's of... Let's spell out, here's my dick. Okay, we'll spell out, here, no, here's no apostrophe. my apostrophe. Here's my dick. You don't need a movie that starts with an apostrophe. I, somebody should make one. <laughs> um, it kinda, it's kind of uh, simple. You name a film that starts with the first letter, and then it goes to the next person, and if you can't think of one, then you're stupid, and you lose. And it goes till somebody is last. And whoever wins this will host first. Okay. And any any, mo any movie that starts with the is a T, and nothing else. So, Nick, you're the guest. You can start. So we're spelling, here's my dick. We're spelling, here's my dick. So you start at H. Uh... Halloween 3. Ah, the best one. Season of the Witch. Season of the Witch. Scott, you get E. Who needs that pesky Mike Myers when you have a bunch of other crazy shit? Masks <laughs> and witches. It's so good. I want to watch that again. Um, so what are we? E. e. Everything Must Go. That's a bad choice. Never seen it. It's good. <laughs> and I heard it was good. Uh, R, I will say... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Trouble, Bruin. Ray. <laughs> <laughs> the easiest one. There you go. And E, back to you, Nick. Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn. I'm glad we're not doing apostrophe, because it would have come to me. <laughs> <laughs> S. Uh, S, I will go Snitch, starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> Although I do want to see it. Ugh, idiot. Uh, what was it? M? Yeah. Um, let's go with... My Father the Hero, starring Gerard Depardieu. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll go with Year One, even though it's so bad. <laughs> it's got, I haven't seen it. David Cross looked like he might have been funny in it. Uh, eh, guess no? He was average at average. best. All right. That's the best you can ask for in that movie, I guess. Uh, D. Uh, Dr. Doolittle... Two hunting season. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Um, I will say I'm still here. Stupid movie. Great movie. Be beardy movie. A beardy movie where, where he's fat. 
Uh, see you, Nick. I have to apologize. <laughs> I got caught up. Uh, Jonah posted a thing on the Becca Wrestling link that uh, uh-huh. was making fun of a promotion I'm involved with. <laughs> <laughs> I had to jump in real quick. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> You're on C. You're on C. And K to me, I promise. I will go kicking and screaming. Not that one, the other one. Not the bad one, the good one. Yeah. So the Will Ferrell one. Sure. <laughs> uh, I did two Will Ferrell movies. That's odd. Well, you love him, apparently. Well, that uh, ended with nobody winning. I went last, so I'm going to say I won. Fair? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair to you. Yes. Okay, I'm going to... Oh, God. Okay, well, nobody won that round, so <laughs> let's play another game. Let's play. No, I can't play that because I have to look at the numbers. If you can, um, if you can fill time for ten seconds, I'll I'll do. A, how much did this shit make with you guys? But then you know the answer. Yeah, so you guys can play. I'll I'll abstain. That's dumb. You're dumb. You're ugly. <laughs> You're ugly. You're fat. You're fat. <laughs> You're pretty. <laughs> you too. <laughs> you. you... You want to kiss? Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> Phil, I'm finding a movie. Okay, well, no, see, because now, if you're going to do this, you might as well just host. But I want, uh, no. We, okay, fine. Something I guess to do. between you, Nick, between you and I, whoever wins, how much does this shit make, one of us will host. And if you do badly, I host. <laughs> okay, if neither one of us, if we both go over, then Scott okay, will host. Yeah, there you go. Okay. That's fair. So, how much does this shit make, essentially, is Scott will pick a movie, and Nick and I have to choose a number based on how much we think that movie made domestically in the box office throughout its entire theatrical run. It also includes re-releases. If they... If they have one. In fact, have them. And if it's Battleship, I already know the answer. (laughs) Really? No, but... To, to, To the dollar... I know what the international was, three hundred and eight million dollars. <laughs> Those Ruskies really love their stupid action movies, no matter how bad they are. Apparently, Jesus, Russians are dumb. I think we can agree on that. And they smell bad. They and don't get me started on Kazakhs, because they are the most disgusting human beings <laughs> on the face of the planet. They're half Russian and half Asian. They are hideous. They are <laughs> Mongoloids. <laughs> Out of thinly veiled racism. I think you're mispronouncing okay. thinly. <laughs> I think it's okay for me to be racist towards the Kazakhs. I'm never going to meet one. If you do, you're <laughs> fucked. And if I do, I accept getting beaten and curb stomped and possibly All raped. Right, wait a minute. <laughs> so you're making these. You're making these opinions about a group of people you've never met. Correct. <laughs> okay, you, Nick, go look up. Go <laughs> to uh. IMDb, and look up, I don't know, I, god damn it, I cannot remember how to pronounce his last name, but the, his name is Timu Brebrebrebre, <laughs> he directed, like, Nine and, uh, other things of that nature, and he is hideous! I'm gonna look it up right now to show <laughs> Scott. Yes! He is disgusting he, uh, to look he at. He does all that fucking. He did nine and he did. Um, <laughs> is it Night Watch? Yeah, Night did Watch he do and that Day fucking Watch. Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter or yeah. whatever. Yes. yes, he did. And he's doing some stupid squirrel movie that Kelly's gay for. God, that movie was fucking terrible. What movie? Squirrels. Squirrels. Oh, I saw something about that. Don't worry, I'll find it and you'll uh, look. All right, so what movie are we trying to do? How much the shit? We are made? doing. Doctor Doolittle Two, <laughs> <laughs> not subtitled Hunting Season. <laughs> what is the subtitle? There isn't one. It is just Doctor Doolittle Two. What? Yeah. Starred Eddie Murphy as Cedric the Entertainer, Lisa Kudrow, and Frankie Muniz. The latter three as voices, because I'm pretty sure it's just Eddie Murphy and a bunch of animals. You see this? I got a number. How do you like them bananas? You muted your microphone, guys. Yeah, something terrible happened. Whatever.
Alright, Google can eat a dick. Because it completely just shit out on us, and now we're back on Skype. And Nick sounds a thousand times clearer. So, uh, yeah, we're done with fucking Google+. Plus. So where we left off, Scott? What, what, what was the last thing we were talking about? We are finding out how much this shit made. And the thing this shit is referring to is Dr. Doolittle 2. How many... Just clarify. Yeah. How many Oscars did it win? Um, well, I know it got cinematography, and it was up for picture, but I don't think it won. It was 2001, so I think it just lost out to A Beautiful Mind. Uh, yeah, that Beautiful Mind was good. I don't know if it was Dr. Doolittle too I, good. I don't think, yeah, I, well, I think what Dr. Doolittle was missing was I don't think, um, one of the deer turned out to be in Eddie Murphy's imagination. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea that Dr. Doolittle can talk to animals, but, but one of them is <laughs> That's That's a thinker. I, I want to I see, if not make, that movie. That is a good movie. <laughs> we'll get that Serbian director guy to direct well, it. Yeah, we'll get that guy. He's on it. He's not doing anything else. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. The game is how much did this shit make. You guys gotta guess... Uh, Price is Rat style, closest without going over. Uh, how much Dr. Doolittle 2 made domestically in its full theatrical run, including any re releases, as we know there were many, in the vein of Star Wars? Oh boy. So let's go Drew first. I will say. And sorry, before you say anything, the genre of this movie, according to <laughs> Box Office Mojo, is. Family slash talking animal slash live action. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll okay, two thousand and one, and it was Eddie Murphy. And so we're a, living in a pre nine eleven world here, and it's a kids movie. <laughs> Keep that in mind. I think that's an important part. I will say this was June. This this was released June two thousand one. Oh, so, so it the, the, just be the out. towers were standing. So, people in the towers saw the movie, so that's, yes. that's an extra... That, oh my that's God. an extra 3,000 people That's the worst slash funniest thing you've ever said. Oh my God. So, if you factor in those extra 3,000 people that those saw it... Those extra 3,000 people... I will say... I'm going to throw up. <laughs> it made $86 million. 86, says Drew? All right. Nick, to you. Sixty-five million. Well, you both undershot. Oh my god! Because it was such a good movie, and I think that deer might have been imaginary. One hundred and twelve point nine million dollars. Jesus! Because everyone is terrible. <laughs> the thing is, it's a kids' movie, so all kids want to see it. Yeah, I guess. So does Kid, mean, kids are terrible. Does that mean I win? That means you win. Good. Now, Can Dan, I make a confession. Go. I saw Dr. Doolittle 2 <laughs> at a drive-in as it was playing with The Fast and the Furious. <laughs> That's a hell of a double bill. Yeah. <laughs> was it Fast and the Furious first and then they made the kids stay up and watch Dr. Doolittle at like 9.30? That's a weird choice. <laughs> yeah, sit through this Michelle Rodriguez sex scene. <laughs> Watch family so you can movie. watch the talk, the family talking animal live action movie. <laughs> so you can have Andy Dick playing a raccoon. <laughs> Andy Dick is always playing a raccoon. <laughs> Little known fact. Do you know that Andy Dick has AIDS? I didn't, but I would be surprised if you told me he didn't. I don't know if he does. Andy I'm Dick's just making the assumption that he does. He looks like he's made of AIDS. Yes. Anywho... He looks like AIDS wearing a human costume. <laughs> he's got he's got a human flesh bag on. <laughs> okay, here we go. Nick, you still with us? I am. Good. I I don't want you to get cut out because this game's gonna be fun. First to three. All of my categories are on the computer. So no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, that would be a pain in the ass. Okay, uh, who would like to go first? I'll give the guest owners. Okay, Scott, you're a guest of my household. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not, not actually what I meant, but that's fine. 
Okay, Scott, would you like one of these categories? Yes, I would. Would you like Iron Lady, movies with a robotic woman? Okay. Would you like Down Under, movies with down or under in the title? Or would you like a film that has made many a men hard and then soft? <laughs> that is the Spank Bank category, which is a movie that has a famous nude scene. Ah. Hmm. Let us go with Down Under. Okay, would you like a Down Under from 2003? 2003? 2007 or 2002. Huh. Let's go with uh, 2003. First one or second one? First. The first one. This movie, according to Mr. Moulton, is two stars. Uh, he says about this movie that it is strictly a big routine, or sorry, a strictly a routine big screen sitcom. Unless you find the prospects of the oh, I can't read that. Um, <laughs> the star co-executive produced. Um, it is uh, this movie has. Uh, a very short review with a lot of things I can't say. Hmm. Let me just hold on. Um, it says the main star is wasted in this crude collection of racial and sexual comic stereotypes. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, yes, it's a strictly a routine big screen sitcom. Um, then he has two, eleven names. Huh. So with the cat with the uh, the review clearly tells you that it is a comedy. Yes. Two thousand two, two stars. Two thousand two or two thousand three? Two thousand three, two yeah. stars. <laughs> uh, I will say nine. Uh, seven. Six. Five. Name it. Okay, Nick, you got told to name it. You get five. Yep. Steve Harris, Betty White, Michael Rosenbaum of Smallville fame, Missy Pyle, and Angus T. Jones of the worst show on TV fame. Oh, that's about it. An interesting cast. That's the bottom. <laughs> Do you have any idea? It's got down or under in the title. Two thousand three, down or under in the title. What were the other clues? Uh, that the main actor is wasted in this crude collection of racial and sexual comic stereotypes. Uh, it is strictly a routine big screen sitcom. That's it. While looking around my bedroom, I have seen it. Uh, Igby goes down. It does have down in it. I feel like that's not it, though. That is not it, sadly. No. The I rest of the cast it. is Kimberly J. Brown, Gene Smart, Joan Plowright, Eugene Levy... Quinn Latafa. Oh, God damn it. And Steve Martin. Bring down, down the house. house. Yes. Ugh. I hear that was a not so good. Steve, <laughs> Steve Martin is fine in that movie. The rest? The rest, not so much. Eugene Levy, though, in that movie, he's down with the swirl. Oh, that's right. He lets you know. I think he lets you know in the trailer. Yep. Okay. That means it's one to nothing for Scott. Um, so does Nick choose? Uh, yeah. Okay, Nick, your turn to pick. 
Would you like... Uh, let me look over my clues here. Um, give me a good one here. Book. Um, man. Okay. I'm going to go to the back catalog. Would you like one that is... Uh, good guys, bad guys, and explosions. Movies where somebody diffuses a bomb. Hmm. Um, all bombs. That's a movie that Leonard has given a bomb rating to. But nobody necessarily diffuses a bomb in it. Nobody diffuses it. Okay. It's just a bomb. Or would you like the category of of uh, last movie by a very famous actor. Somebody who is considered a legend in the business, and this was the last film that they did before they died. Um, let's do bombs. Uh, all bombs. All bombs. Would you like one from um, 1997, 1995, or 2005? 1997. Oh, I lied. I wrote it down wrong. It's 1996. You bastard. <laughs> do you I, I'll do 96. That's okay. We'll keep that one. Okay, so, of course, Leonard gives us one a bomb. He says about this... Uh, oh my god. <laughs> The review is maybe 30 words. <laughs> he didn't have a great deal to say. He and says that it is an insulting comedy. <laughs> um, it attempts to mine all the humor it can out of the main actor. Um, it is pitiful. And shameless are his exact words. And there are eight names. Hmm. Um, eight names. Seven. Six. Five. Name it. All right. So, five names for Scott. Your names are Bruce McGill, Timothy Carhart, Grant Hesloff, Gary Busey, and Christine Ebersole. Huh, that's not a great deal of help besides Gary Busey. Shameless Comedy 1996. Pitiful and shameless. Pitiful and shameless. <sighs> it is in an insulting comedy. Ah, he also has comedy in quotation marks. Oh, he really didn't like this. Well, he did give it a bomb. Huh. Uh, uh, I almost want to go with just what I thought from the start, although I don't think it's right, and it might not be the right year, and I don't think Gary Busey's in it, so that doesn't speak well for it. <laughs> but what the hell is Gary Busey in 1996? <sighs> Yet. Well, I'm, I don't have a better guess, so I'm just going to go with what I thought from the start. High school high. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good guess. It's um, around the right time. I want to see, hold on, before you say this, I want to see if he gave it a bomb. He it seems like have. he would have. Even though he's wrong, it's awesome. <laughs> Holy crap, he gave it two stars. Good man, it's not a bomb. Um, it has its moments. The correct film would uh, uh, be... Give, give me I'm more, go up. more actors. After that, you've got Tim Matheson. Okay. David I knew it. David Spade. <laughs> and Chris Farley. Oh, come Black on! Sheep. Black Sheep? He gave Black Sheep a bomb. I never would have guessed that, you bastard. Tommy Boy's as soon as you said Gary Busey, I knew it was. His exact right. review is... Um, I'm just going to skip through the part that's kind of plot. Yeah. Uh, it's an insulting comedy reunites the stars of Tommy Boy for virtually the same movie 
which attempts to mine all the humor it can out of Farley's mugging and endless pratfalls, <laughs> plus spade sarcasm. Pitiful and shameless. It is neither of those. Tommy Boy is four stars. Black Sheep is three and three quarters. <laughs> I, I agree. I Thank agree you. Agree. Go to hell, Len Mall. <laughs> wow. I, ne I never would have guessed that because I hope Black Sheep is such high esteem. Yeah, Black Sheep's good. I, don't know. I never would have guessed that. <laughs> I don't know what Leonard's butt fucking What a is. shit. What did he give Tommy Boy? He gave Tommy Boy... Oh, Scott, you're going to not like this at I'm all. I'm not going to be happy about this. One and a half. Oh, my God. What? Well, you don't even know what you're talking about. I'm pretty sure he gave Billy Madison about um... the same. Um... Utterly predictable comedy with scattershot laughs. Farley and Spade don't quite have the finesse of Wheeler and Woolsey. Rob Lowe appears unbilled as Derek's son. That's his review. I love that Rob Lowe is unbilled. <laughs> He's a pretty major character. <laughs> yeah, I know. But yeah, he did not. He does huh. not like. Uh, maybe he just doesn't like. I'm guessing Chris Farley threw up on him at a party or something. Well, I'm looking up Beverly Hills Ninja, so give me a second here. That one I can see rating lower. One and a half. Okay, so Beverly Hills Ninja is the same as Tommy Boy. You can eat a dick. <laughs> Almost Heroes. One and a half. Okay, I'm pretty sure he's not even watching these. What other uh, good movies are there that he's in? Are the ones that we like? Does Dirty Work count? I guess, but that's a Norm MacDonald movie. Yeah. Dirty Work. One and a half. Apparently anything with Chris Farley gets one and a half or bombs. Stupid. What about Wayne's World? Oh yeah. Well, that might see that might be different because that's Mike Myers. Wayne's World he gives two. Wayne's World two he gives two. Billy Madison. One and a half. Yeah, you can eat shit, Leonard. <laughs> you had a you had a miserable nineties, Leonard. Well, that, so that ties it up. Yep. Uh, so it's back to Scott. Yep. Um, I will go with uh, Breaking Bond. That's movies that star an actor who has portrayed Bond in a non-Bond role. Mm -hmm. um, Been a Long Time Coming. That's a movie that is a very extended period of time between uh, after the first movie was released, so it's a sequel, or it might be the third one after a second film, or a fourth after a okay. third, you know. So a, a, a long gap. A long gap the, between films. Yeah. And the other one might be a little tough. It's called Music to My Ears, and it is a movie that I consider to have a very good soundtrack. Okay. So might be tough. Movies with a lot of Linkin Park and Three Doors Down. <laughs> and Breaking Benjamin. And Breaking Benjamin. I'm not super familiar with those, so let's go Long Time Coming. Long Time Coming. Would you like one from... And by Three Doors Down, I meant Three Days Grace. I apologize. Oh, yeah. You shit the bed. Yeah, sorry. You're fired. Um, would you like one from 1986, uh, 2010, or 1996? 86, 96, 99. Wait, you also said 2010. Oh, sorry, yeah. 86, 86, 96, 2010. Okay. Drew, are you Doug Benson? Yes. <laughs> Seriously. I am Doug Benson. You're doing a very good Doug Benson impression. I'm very high. Um, hmm. These are all interesting years. Let's us go with uh, 1986. Okay, this movie, 1986, a extended period between this one and the pre previous film. Leonard gives it three stars. I strongly disagree. Four stars. Okay. He says that this film... Uh, he says that the... The though the film through the film second half oh though though the film second half is protracted and disappointing with a hot 
for climax that never occurs. You sure it's not hoped for? Oh, hoped for, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, oh, I can't say that, because that gives that away. Maybe don't say that. <laughs> uh, he says that there is a top-notch performance by the secondary character. Um, and it is a hard-boiled script. Huh. And flashy direction. Well, there you go. So he enjoyed it, not as much as I did. And there is eight names. Eight! Well, I better go ahead and say zero then. Nick, zero to you. Uh, 1986, sequel. Leonard says some good stuff about it. Gotta say, name it. I don't know if. Before you name it. Before I name it. Do you think you could have gone. I can tell you the first two. I just don't know what order Drunk Leonard put them in. Okay. Well, Walt Scott, what's the movie? I believe it is Color of Money, comma, The. Correct. And I. If you could go with the actors. I would say Tom Cruise, Paul Newman. Incorrect. Yes. Paul see, Newman, Tom Cruise. Yes. Yeah, that's why I didn't fuck around with that. <laughs> so that is two for Scott. Got Princess Henson. Who your, my middle name? Your middle name is Princess. It Nick. is Princess, yes. Okay, Nick, uh, your turn again. Would you like... Uh, actually, I actually have two middle names. It's Scott Princess Grace Henson. <laughs> Princess Grace. Okay, I, I got it. I got it. I'm sorry I screwed that up. Uh, I, I do like the category of uh, breaking Bond, so Bond actor is not in a Bond role. Bond actor is cooking meth. <laughs> cooking meth. Uh, Kill him to foe. <laughs> movies where Willem Dafoe dies, and a category that I think is clever, but nobody else thinks is clever, <laughs> The Bridges of Los Angeles County, which is a film of Jeff, Bo, or Lloyd Bridges. Okay. One of them will be in this film. Maybe two, maybe three. I think it's clever. i got no problem Because they're that. from Los Angeles County. We get it. <laughs> 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 but I do hope that you explain it every time that you I say will. it. Um, see, I'm not too well versed in the films of Bo Bridges, so it could be a, a little... Jeff Bridges film, though. But if it's if it's Jeff or Lloyd, I do have a pretty good uh, pretty good odds on those. It's Mafia, um, isn't it? <laughs> I love Mafia. Yeah, let's try. Let's do that one. Let's do uh, Bridges. I hope you pick a Bo one. Two and a half <laughs> for Mafia. Uh, I, maybe, who knows? Would you like one from 2001, 2008, or, uh, let's go with 1991. Spoiler, 2008 probably isn't Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> Buzzing. <laughs> Oh, you made me sad. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, 2001, 2008, or 1991? Um, 91. 91. Oops, shit. Nineteen ninety one. Leonard gives this film three stars. Um, he says, it is a surprisingly high quotient of successful gags. Um, help this comedy. Uh, the main character is a riot. And it was followed by a sequel. And he says, 13 names. Zero names. Oh boy. Are you quoting Strange Wilderness? Yep. <laughs> that movie is awesome. <laughs> that movie is ahead of its time in that it's not a movie. Um, hmm. 
Now I have to figure out what this movie is. Yep. I mean, and you need to name the top build. Well, probably if I could figure it out, I could figure out minus one, but I don't know if that first part is happening. Ugh. I was going to go negative one because I was afraid that you would know what it is. It's not coming no. to me, so I regrettably have to say name it. Is this movie Hot Shots? It is, in fact, Hot Shots. That seems about right. Negative one would be Charlie Sheen? Correct. I think, yeah. Negative two? Negative, negative two would be... Oh... There's a chance that it could be Renata, but I'm going to go with Lloyd Bridges. Uh, Carrie Ells. Ah, damn it, I was thinking he was going to be three. Lloyd is fourth behind Valeria Jolino. Yeah. Wow. Where I... is, um, where's John Cryer on that list? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, sixth. Behind Kevin Dunn. Not of... Oh, uh, of WWE fame. Of WWE fame. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, huh. we're all tied up here, so this is for the win. Sudden death. Whoever wins hosts. Uh, would you like Scott, because it's going to you. Yeah. Uh, would you like Gaijin Go Home? <laughs> Movies of a white actor in an Asian nation. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the Line of Fire, a movie where a actor is burned to death. <laughs> or would you like <laughs> Wayans World, a film of the Wayans acting dynasty? Ooh, uh, can I afford to do that? <laughs> yeah, let's do Wayans World. Wayans World, it is. Would you like one from 1996? 2004 or 2009? Ugh. 96. It's loading for some reason and taking a sweet ass time. It just needs to contain a weigh-ins, right? One, one, or two, more? three, four, or all 12 of them. Okay. <laughs> For whatever reason, Scott, your iPad is being a piece of shit. It is version one. You shouldn't take free iPads, then. <laughs> I think I should. Seriously, bro, what is wrong with this thing? I don't know what's it doing. It's frozen. How are we supposed to record a podcast if your shit is broken? Oh my god, what are you doing? I'm just trying to go, go back in. Yeah, it's back. Okay, good. I think. See, this is the problem with only one of us having an iPad. Maybe if my sister, my girlfriend won one at a Christmas party, she didn't sell it to a bunch of ching chongs. Oh yeah, what the hell, girlfriend? Well, she's a bitch. Well, let me know if uh, you ever need me to Jimmy Snooker her. No, I would be Jimmy Snooker. Oh yeah, I guess you I... would be helping me and Jimmy Snooker my girlfriend. Oh sure. Oh, that's even easier for me. Come on, Scott, figure it out. It, okay, it definitely is being a faggot. <laughs> we can agree on that. I can give you my review of this movie as opposed to what <laughs> Leonard's review is. I wish, uh, let me... Uh, I know exactly what's happening. You may have to... Uh, Play it by ear? No, vamp for time for 30 seconds. Vamping for time, vamping for time. Just restarting. Oh, God. I don't know. It, it definitely... You you did nothing wrong. It was being a piece of shit. It was being a piece of shit. <laughs> I had your... Scott, I had your iPad for a week. It was sticky. I was going to <laughs> do so many terrible things to it, but I didn't think you would appreciate it. Background change, 
uh, load up a million porn. I'm, I'm glad I was you going because I don't think I would know how to change the I was going to back. perfectly clean the screen so it was nice and perfect, and then get a boner and push my wiener oh on my it God. so there would be a nice imprint. <laughs> Uh, you should be glad that I am a better friend than that. Very upsetting. If this was Daniel Maccabees... Maccabees. Maccabees. <laughs> I would have done that. Okay, it's back. Have you seen the new Jack promo, Nick? I have not. I heard about it. Actually, Starbucks mentioned it to me. Oh, yeah. You should watch it. It's good. It's something. New Jack definitely says my name. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> My life is complete. Okay, so it's loaded up. 1996, it's got at least one weigh-ins, possibly 12. <laughs> Between 1 and 12 weigh-ins. And you want to weigh-ins. Leonard gives this film a bomb. I bet he's wrong. I bet it's great. He is wrong, according to me. Yeah. Um, he says that it might have worked as a wild farce, but in this realistic comic mode... It's a disaster, with hmm. repellent characters, <laughs> latent pacing, and no laughs. <laughs> and he gives it eight characters, eight actors. Eight actors. Actors. Huh. This feels like a go big or go home situation, so I will say zero. Uh, Gotta go with name it, because that's that's a little too ambiguous for me. Yeah, I, this is largely a guess. I know it's around the right time. That's what I'm going off of. I will say, and if Leonard, if if I'm right and Leonard gave this bomb, he is definitely wrong about every movie from the 1990s. Because this is at least three and a half. Great white hype, comma the. Do you think you're right? I hope I'm right. Nick just won. Ah, oh, God fucking damn it. Is it Don't Be a Menace to South Central while drinking your juice in the hood? No, it I is not. Think, I think that's like 93. I will read four. you the synopsis that Leonard Moat wrote. Is it I'm Gonna Get You, Sucker? Two obsessed Boston Celtic fans drunkenly kidnap uh, the arrogant star of the rival uh, basketball team to ensure that their team wins the championship. Celtic, Celtic Pride. Celtic Pride, written by... Colin Quinn. Yeah, good for him. Yep. I like Colin Quinn. I like Colin Quinn, too. And the reason why this movie deserves better is because Daniel Stern and Dan Aykroyd are two of my favorite comedic actors of like the late 70s to before Daniel Stern got really fat. <laughs> and Dan Aykroyd got really Dan fat. Dan Aykroyd got fat. He's okay. I'm okay if he's fat. Okay. Daniel Stern can't be fat. He does. He, he plays better skinnier. He's, he's belly now. He's got yeah. a nice belly going on. He should stick to... Voicing over the Wonder Years. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm grown up. I don't need your voice anymore. <laughs> wow. So Nick won, and fuck. That means he gets the host. Got too ballsy. So you got your shit together, Nick. I do have my shit together. Good. I am anticipating some shit getting put together. I've got new. Uh, categories, and I have old categories that I actually created on the off chance that we may be playing like different holiday things, so there's a Christmas category on here. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy girl. Drew, could you be a deer and top up my root beer? I would gladly love to top up your A&W root beer. Are they sponsoring us? I don't know. You tell me if A&W root beer is our sponsor for today. I think they do. Okay. I just want to make sure that Nick knows what we're talking about. Nick, do they have A&Ws in the States? Yes. They must, right? Yeah. Hamburgers and Whoopios. <laughs> That's what it stands for? No. I mean, there's <laughs> like, a video that was on, it was from like the early 2000s called, Am it was somebody made a song called oh, yeah? Hamburgers and Whoopio. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I it's haven't really seen that. It's funny. Well, was it the I scene? I need to find it now. <laughs> Oh my god, that's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna find it and I'm gonna play it. Ask and receive. Drew, suge Drew suggested it might stand for Ask and Receive. Ask and Receive? Mm hmm. 
I'm, I'm assuming it's just two names. I don't actually know. Alston and Winstrop. <laughs> sure. This is good All as right, any. Let me set up my mic. Let me set up my speakers because we're totally playing this. All right, I'm excited about this. I'll take my head. Take my headphones out and uh, turn my speakers up. Turn my headphones up. Disgusted. Drew's upset now. <laughs> I will copy that link and put it in our little chat window so you guys can listen to that <laughs> later. Wonderful. For your listening pleasure. I'm sure Drew will be all over it. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, who is going to go first? Uh, Drew's putting his hand up, so I can't argue with that. Alright. Drusif, would you like... Uh, let's see. Kicking and Screaming, as we mentioned oh. earlier. That's films with football players as actors. <laughs> okay. Or would you like Blown Away, movies that take place in Oklahoma. <laughs> oh, topical. That was going to be a lot uh, meaner, trust me. Uh, <laughs> we, we appreciate your restraint. <laughs> it was going to be Boston, uh, but I changed it. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, or would you like a special category that only I can do, Choose Your Own Adventure, where you give me a page number, and I will pick a movie at random from that page in the Leonard Malton Guide book. Holy shit. You know what? It's nothing, nothing. I'm going to choose my own adventure. Let's do it. All right, I have the sole discretion of what movie you I pick, but you get to pick the page number. That's fair. All right. I, I will give you a basis of what this goes to. You can go from page... Let's see, that's random actors... Actual movie listing ends on page 1,596. Shit. Uh, and the movies start as they should on page 1. So 1 to uh, 1,596. And are they alphabetical? They are all alphabetical. Oh, that's cheating. Hardvark the movie. Um, <laughs> 1! <laughs> I will choose, just especially for you, Nick... Number six hundred and sixty-six. <laughs> oh, you know me well as the Antichrist. Let's see. <laughs> the page of the beast will give you a bunch of movies no one's ever heard of. <laughs> Go to the nearest movie someone's heard of to page six six six. 18 minutes to midnight. All right, I had to go to I had to go to page 667 because I don't think anybody would know these movies. We make we go let me go through one more time. Nope. Nope. These are all bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> these are all movies no one gives a fuck about. <laughs> all right, here's the first movie on page 667 that I thought that you guys would know. Uh, it is from 2006. Wait, my wheelhouse. Uh, Leonard, give me...
gives this movie two and a half stars. He says of this movie, It is an intriguing story, uh, lets down towards the end, and becomes di disappointingly ordinary. Um, it's based on a short story by Stephen Milhauser. And I think that's really the only thing I can say. Um, yeah, that's the only thing I can, that's really all I can say. So, it's an intriguing story, lets down towards the end, it becomes disappointingly ordinary, and it is based on a short story by Stephen Millshauser. 2006, uh, Leonard gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight names. Well... As broad as this category is, I'm going to have to go eight. <laughs> Sounds reasonable. I will go seven. I'll go six. I'll go five. I will go name it. Okay. All right, five names. Starting with Tom Fisher, Jake Wood, Edward Eddie Marson. Eddie. Rufus Sewell. And. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It wasn't eight names, it was seven names. I forgot he puts the director on here. Damn it, I'm sorry. So. Fuck. <laughs> so that kind of fucks everything up. That's fine. Give me the five. Just give him five, whatever. Give me the fifth name. Sorry about that. I Jessica know what it Beale. is. What was the last, the last name? Jessica Beale. Huh. I know what it is. Tom Fisher, Jake yeah. Wood, Edward Eddie Marson, Rufus Sewell, or Je and Jessica Biel. I could have gone negative one now that I, well, if I know what it was. I can go negative one on this bad boy. 2006, two and a half stars. Mm. Huh. Sorry, I fucked that one up. That's okay. We all fuck up. Um, Some more than others. Me. And it's... <laughs> Six, six, six of fifteen hundred. So alphabetically, that'd be around the eyes. So let's try. I am legend. You're retarded. I don't know. Uh, Nick, is this film negative one? Edward Norton, the illusionist. It is indeed. Wow. Good job. Yeah, just so Drew gets that. a point, and Drew? that's quite impressive that you would figure out the letter out of. Yeah, that was actually pretty good. I, there's a staggering amount of, of movies that start with the letter S, so that does kind of off put all the other letters. So. I'm I'm better at math than movies. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty impressive. The Rufus Sewell was the one that gave it away to me because I'm like, huh, he's in a Knight's Tale and the Illusionist, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> I literally spent the entire time figuring out what letter it would start with <laughs> and, and nothing else. Just to sound cool? Yeah. You bitch. Your turn. You're up. Scott's turn. Uh. What happens when you bend down after drinking a W root beer? <laughs> Nick. Uh, that would be my turn, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, you are hosting. Let's see. Are you shit talking Jonah some more? No, sorry about that. Um, let's see. How about Get Stuffed? Films featuring taxidermy. Love it. <laughs> Good times. Chopping onions. Movies that made me cry. <laughs> Or The Fungus Among Us, movies where people are on mushrooms. <laughs> I thought he was going to say movies that feature an Incubus song. <laughs> huh. Let's... Get it? Because that was one of their album titles. That's great. Um... The first category was what? Uh, get Stuffed, films featuring taxidermy. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do taxidermy. All right, would you like a movie from 2010 or 1960? 60. 
1960. Leonard gives this movie four stars, as he jolly well should. He says, Legendary score adds much to the excitement. Uh, it's followed by three, three sequels and a TV movie. Three threequels. <laughs> three sequels and a TV movie. Uh, and it is a notorious film, still terrifying after all these years. 1964 stars, and it features taxidermy. Twelve names. Negative one. I know what the movie is. Uh-huh. I just don't know if I can go in a specific order without uh -huh. fucking it up. Well, I gotta hope that for some reason Leonard has a weird billing on this <laughs> or you get it wrong. Uh -huh. So I say name it. Uh, Psycho. 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 Psycho Sid. Anthony Perkins. That is correct. Yeah. Which is really fucking irritating because Janet Lee should have been top built. In my head, I was she has, she has a lot more screen time, right? Yeah, in my head, yeah. I was thinking he was going to put Janet Lee number one. I, I was pretty sure he wouldn't because he hates women. <laughs> he does hate women. Yeah. He does also hate the actual stars of movies. Yes, he also hates Ben Stiller. He also hates the right order. <laughs> but like that's the whole point of Janet Lee being in the movie was that yeah. she was the top billed actress and nobody thought that she would die. Yes. I mean, admittedly, she's in the film less than anyone else in the movie, but yeah. she still should have been top billed just for that single yeah, reason. She's, she's in it less than Viggo Mortensen is. Oh, Drew. <laughs> I purposefully didn't pick the remake just because I know that you've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you said the category, I'm like, I better get a psycho out of this one. And I did, so I was happy. 1-1. One, one. All right, yep, 1-1. One, one. So that means it is Drew's turn to pick? Yep. Um, my turn to pick. I, oh, yeah, I named yeah. you. told you name it, right? Yeah. Let's go to one of my old categories then. Uh, we can do Christmas. <laughs> Canned Zalafter horror movies featuring sitcom stars. <laughs> um, good, good text joke. Uh, Black Christmas. The, sh the films of Shane Black. I was going to the films of Goldberg. <laughs> uh, or... Yeah, spoiler alert, it's all of them. Uh, or... Let's do... Because I'm feeling too good about myself. Chopping Onions, movies that made me cry. <laughs> well, let's take you down with some Chopping Onions then. Alright. Would you like a movie from 1991 or 2009? Huh. Huh. You cried more recently than Scott. <laughs> yeah. Um. Who? What were? What was there to cry at? In I think I've actually talked about this on the show before. Huh. Yeah, you Possibly. might have, but I, I can't remember. remember. Shit. So ninety-one or oh nine? Yes. Huh. Let's a go. Oh nine. Two thousand and nine. Leonard gives this movie two and a half stars. Uh, he says that it is disarming, almost unsettling in its honesty. Uh, films enchanting high spots are punctuated by unfortunate lulls, and still a singular achievement. Hmm. Interesting, okay. Uh, two and a half stars, nine names. It is actually nine names. <laughs> okay. Because uh, I wrote this one. Let's go nine. Let's go seven. 
six. Let's go five. <sighs> now I'm torn because we're down far enough that it's sort of worthwhile to make you name it. But at the same time, I have a decent guess as to what it is, so I almost want to go zero. But I'm a big pussy, so I will say it, name it. And then beat myself up if you get it right. <laughs> I hope you beat yourself up. And off. Alright, here are your five names. Paul Dano. Chris Cooper. Catherine O'Hara. Forrest Whitaker. Lauren Ambrose. And that movie is... That movie is... Um, it is... Fuck. Having a hard time remembering what film Forrest Whitaker was in that wasn't the last King of Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> I will have to guess that it is... The Last King of Scotland. Ghost Dog, The Way, <laughs> way of the Samurai. The samurai. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a tearjerker Ghost Dog is. <laughs> My guess was, before you read any more, was Up. It wasn't Up, though Up was one of the, was a, on a list of movies that made me cry. Ah. Um, I'll keep going. James Gandolfini. Where the Wild Things Buffalo. Are. Where the Wild Things Are. Yep. Yeah. Catherine Keener and Max Records. Yeah. That's right. I should have got that, actually. I watched that for the second time not too long ago. What part made you cry? The, the end, when he's leaving. That's not sad. Right? It actually doesn't have a lot to do with the movie itself. I saw it with my mom, mm -hmm. who I hadn't seen in about five years, and it uh. was the first book that I ever had when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, so it's, she would read me the story over and over again. And since the whole movie is about a son and her mother having a major disconnect in their yeah. life, yeah, both of us were bawling in the middle of the theater. <laughs> yeah, it, it, really, it is like a really melancholy movie. Oh, yeah, it's seriously fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. it. It might be my favorite movie from that year. I think it's great, but yeah, it's it's so much sadder than I thought it would be. Yeah, yeah, I was not, like, we went to see the movie, I was like, oh, this should be fun. Yeah. I was not expecting to leave, no. like, with tears in my oh, eyes. Oh, yeah. No, I, um, I don't, uh, the, when I saw it in the theater, I don't know if I straight up cried. I definitely had some sniffles, though. You pussy. You're pussy. <laughs> and, Fuck you, Drew. And, and, and by that, I mean I tried to recreate some of your human emotions. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that was a good call. I did actually cry during Up. I saw Up on a date, and I still cried. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I think Up was 2009, right? 9 or 10? Um, yeah, it would have been 2009. Yeah. Mm, yeah. But then I... I but with Up, <laughs> I cried because uh, two weeks... Or, or not two weeks, about a month earlier, my grandmother died. Oh, so, man. thanks, Disney, for that <laughs> fucking swift punch to the gut. Seriously. I was going to say something terrible, but I changed my mind. Go ahead. Could your grandmother also not have kids? Oh, my God. <laughs> Which doesn't well, make sense. Doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> that doesn't really make any sense. Defeats <laughs> the definition of being a grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> humor, I think that was just accidental stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was intentional humor. <laughs> I'm not that dumb. I don't know. It's a win either way. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so where does that... Is that two Drew, one Scott? Two Scott, one Drew. Oh, that... Right? Oh, I haven't been paying attention. Scott got right, the so wrong, that... Psycho on this one. Yeah, I got Psycho and... And I couldn't name this one. And Drew got this wrong. Oh. 
Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So Drew picks. Um. I hate your face. <laughs> let's do. Shuffle this mortal mortal slinky. And that's films where children <laughs> die on screen. <laughs> Uh, you've said that before, but I still love it. <laughs> um, talking heads, movies where severed heads speak. <laughs> or... What's kicking and screaming, films with football players. I like that one because I hope it's one movie I'm thinking of, so let's do that one. You have two options with this one. It's either the year of 1996. 2006. Or 2096. Um, 1996 or 2000. 1996. All right. 1996. Leonard Maltin gives this movie two stars. He's wrong. He needs to be a lot more. Um, he says this movie is extraordinarily stupid. <laughs> Over the top villain is monotonous, and he asks, "Did it have to be this dumb?" <laughs> Answer: Yes. It has eleven names. Eleven. Nine. Eight. Seven. Name it. Okay. Although I thought I had an idea, but seven of eleven. All right, Scott. Your names are Daniel Von Bargen. Oh, the Von Bargen family. Kurtwood Smith. Kurtwood Red. Back Jack back Thompson. Vondi Curtis Hall. Of course. Howie Long. <laughs> Frank Whaley and Bob Gunton. Ah, go Gunt. I I know Bob Gunton. Good old gun puncher. What's he in? Um, I can see his face. Um, fuck. And Howie Long. So it's Howie Long in something other than Backdraft. No, Firestorm. Firestorm, sorry. Backdraft was an actual movie. <laughs> yeah. Backdraft wasn't a joke of Hollywood. Yeah. Sorry, wrap. Firestorm. <laughs> Uh, I shit. I am not confident with this. <laughs> um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Drew just hit me in the eyeball with a corn nut. There was a peanut. Fuck. <laughs> Ow. I'm blind now. Um. <laughs> Fuck you. <sighs> Really, I, I'm really taken aback by the fact that Howie Long has done more than one movie. Uh, so it was 1996 and it was really dumb, but still cut two stars. Huh. I regrettably have nothing. Do you concede? I concede. We keep going. Delroy Lindo. Delroy Lindo! Samantha Mathis. Christian Slater and John Travolta in Broken Arrow. Broken Arrow. Broken oh, Arrow. Shit. Now I definitely would have needed at least Christian Slater to get that. That's the only Howie Long movie I could think of. Firestorm, motherfucker. I don't even know what the hell Firestorm. Are you kidding me? It was the movie <laughs> event of the season. It's a firefighting movie, but it's the it's the forest. It's backdraft, but foresty, and with <laughs> Howie Long. I was really hoping you were gonna choose the longest yard. It's pine-scented backdraft. Exactly. All right, so that puts it. You guys are even now, right? Yeah, this is what I do. I, I get it to two-two, and then I blow it. <laughs> <laughs> this is my this is my game. That's the cornerstone. All right, so let's do. So who's picking? Scott. Uh, me. Alright, Scott. How about we do another round of Choose Your Own Adventure. Mm-hmm. Blown Away. 
State, movies that take place in Oklahoma. Or, or the fungus among us, the people who are on mushrooms. Hmm. Who's on shrooms? Let's go let's go OKC actually. Let's go blown away. Go thunder. Blown away. You have two options, sir. Yeah, they're all right. Two thousand and ten or nineteen eighty three. Huh. Was well, there? No, you gonna say something stupid? No, I'm not. <laughs> Take that as a yes. Uh, let's go 2010. 2010. Uh, Litterbomb gives this movie three stars. He says it has beautiful imagery. It is entertaining. Uh, and that there isn't any emotional resident resonance when it is all over. There are eight names in this movie. Huh. Eight. 2010, eight, uh, three stars. Eight names, says Scott. Zero names. Ooh. Scott, which cup is mine? This one? Yeah, the yeah, one you're pouring is yours. Uh, negative one. Oh, you piece of shit. Fuck, I cannot go negative two. I don't know if I can go negative one. Okay, well then I, name it. I'm just not giving you the satisfaction of zero. Name it, name it, name it, name it. Uh, True Grit, Jeff Bridges. Is correct. Ha! Yes! Scott Vindication. Fuck it. Who would negative two be? Matt negative Damon. Two... Yeah, Matt Damon or no, he's gonna build a girl really low. Sally Stensfield will be low. Yeah. Not Sally Stensfield. Not uh, Sally Stensfield. Uh Haley Steinfeld. Haley. Yeah. Is is Damon second? Damon is second. Yeah. Barry Pepper. Then Brolin. Brolin third. Then Brolin, then Steinfield, then Pepper. Okay. <clears throat> Drew's really mad at me right now. Because <laughs> I love that movie and the original. I haven't seen the Ridge, but I, I really like the Cohen one. I am a fan. You are queer. I am also queer. Queer for true grit. Um, that means you win. That means you get to host. Win. That works out. We actually are done. Should probably wrap it because I think we're about an hour forty. And, and you don't want to host. Good. Thank I you. don't think people will listen beyond that. No, it's less than that because we have to cut it all up part where we're trying to like... Yeah, but even if I think that one we clicked off around 45 and I think couldn't have been more than five minutes. So I think we're about an hour 40. Fair. Which I think is plenty for one day. I'm burned out. That's Drew, good. Drew and I have to go have a nap together now. I'm Little Spoon. I thought you said I'm Middle Spoon. I'm like, is there a third person I don't know about? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard someone call Middle Spoon before. I'm in the closet. I'm joining you. Best, <laughs> best of both worlds. You get the front end. That, that'd be a good reveal, Nick. If you were doing this entire thing, not from Florida, <laughs> but from Drew's closet. That's a good trick. Which would make all of the situation where the actual Skype and Google... Yes, where instead of up. switching from Google to Skype, you could have stepped out of the closet. <laughs> I could be in Drew's closet right now. I totally would. <laughs> and and we would welcome you. I'd be si I'd be sitting in your closet with my Captain America pajama pants <laughs> and my Andre the Giant T-shirt that I bought from Kmart. Awesome. That's a good look. <laughs> well, given that you appear not to be in the closet. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, I thought I'd, I'd give it, I'd give it a few seconds, like just in case. But <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think we shall wrap it up today. Uh, thanks to y'all for listening to episode twenty. Given that anyone is still listening to episode twenty, thank you. And um, 
I guess until next time, Google Plus is a shithead. Anyone else can also add their shitheads. Uh, Arn Robin is a shithead. I'm gonna go with Spike Jones is a shithead. For making you cry? For making me cry. Ha 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 ha.